Hey, it's Megan with My Faith Votes, and we are live in Washington, D.C. today. I'm so thrilled to be with Abby Johnson. We're here because the March for Life is taking place tomorrow, and we're excited because Abby is one of the keynote speakers. So we wanted to introduce you to her because she has a powerful story, and she actually has a movie coming out about your life this spring called Unplanned. So we're going to take a few minutes just to have a little chat with Abby. If you're joining us, tell us hello, tell us hi where you're coming from so we can see where you are. And also if you have a question for Abby, put that in the comment section and we'll, we'll get to those eventually. But we just wanna have you listen to Abby, her story a little bit and have her give us some insights on just pro-life issues and how can we be better equipped, especially as Christians, to talk about that. So the pro-life issue, this is the 46th annual March for Life and we're live, so we're in a hotel, there's gonna be people walking by, but that's the nature of yeah. Just being real life, so glad you're joining us. But it's the 46th annual March for Life. It's always held on or around the anniversary of Roe v. Wade in 1973, so it's very significant that we're here. But you're a keynote address person tomorrow. Tell us about that and what your message is going to be. Well, this year the March for Life, uh, their theme is pro-life is pro-science, and I love that because um, it really reaches everyone because for for those of us who are people of faith like I am um, I know that science comes from my creator um, but for those who don't participate in any faith tradition it also reaches them as well um, and so I think we're moving down the right track here as science becomes more advanced we know more about the unborn person in the womb um, and we know truly about what makes them unique, um, unrepeatable from that, that first day. And, uh, and so I'm gonna be talking a little bit about that, but then of course, um, primarily talking about the film and uh, how, how to get people involved. But my message has always been um, conversion of heart because that was what I experienced. That's what our ministry does. Um, and I know that conversion is possible for anyone. And for those watching who don't know your story, tell us a little bit, kind of in a nutshell, just your past and your history and the life transformation that happened as a result of a particular incident. Yeah, so I worked for Planned Parenthood um, for eight years. I was a clinic director there and left. A couple things happened. One, I was um, being pushed to double our abortion quota, a certain number of abortions that we had to sell. Um, but then ultimately I left after witnessing a live ultrasound guided abortion procedure where I saw a 13 week old baby in the womb fight and struggle um, for his life. And I realized then that there was humanity in the womb and that abortion was taking an individual human life. And so I, I knew then that I was on the wrong side of this debate. And so I ended up leaving and uh, started speaking out and sharing my story and trying to expose what's happening inside of these abortion clinics to women and their children, but also trying to bring about healing because we live in such a wounded culture. One in three women have had abortions, which means one in three men have been affected by abortion. And so really trying to bring about a culture of healing as well for those who have been affected. And that's true. I don't think we talk about that side of it very often. We're so focused on save the babies, but we really need to save the women too who've been yeah. through it and the men. How do you give advice to people to speak into that space? Because abortion really affects all of us in this country, whether we realize it or not. So there's a, a saying that says, um, win an argument, lose a soul. I think we need to, to really pay attention to how we are talking to people who are opposed to us because the majority of, of people, women in particular, who I know that support abortion do so because they themselves have had abortions. And so when we are talking to someone who's yelling in our face or who's giving us a piece of their mind on Facebook or whatever it may be. Um, we have to remember that we're talking to someone who's, who's deeply wounded and broken. And a lot of times 
people who are hurting, they come across as angry, but it's because they don't see the difference. And, and so, you know, we, we do need to be tender, even when it's hard. Um, we do need to be tender when we are planting those seeds. It's not about winning an argument. It's about reaching the heart of, of this person who you're speaking with. And um, showing them love goes much, much further than throwing down a bunch of facts one after another. But we also do need to speak truth but do so in a, a charitable way. Absolutely. For those of you watching, we're talking with Abby Johnson. We're getting ready for the March for Life that's taking place tomorrow right here in Washington, D.C. And as far as a practical approach, so it's easy to say you're pro-life, mm -hmm. but it's another thing to put your faith in action. Mm -hmm. So what are some practical things that we can do right in our communities to advance the pro-life culture? Sure. So there's a few things. Um, there are pregnancy centers in most major cities and many small communities. They do not receive half a billion dollars of tax money from us like Planned Parenthood does. So they rely on volunteers. They rely on the generosity of the church, partnerships from major help. Maybe you're called to volunteer. Maybe you're called to make baby blankets. Maybe you're called to sort their diapers. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but, you know, maybe there's a place for you there. There are about 850 abortion facilities across the country and wherever human life is being taken the Christian response should be to stand there and to give those innocent human beings a voice every day that an abortion clinic is open and there are not Christians out there praying on the front lines that clinic might as well have a big sign up that says this clinic is open with permission of the Christian church. It is our duty to be there to give a voice to those who have none. If this were any other situation, if there was a clinic that opened up in a town and they said, we are willing to euthanize babies up until the age of two, the outcry from the Christian population would be enormous. People would be doing anything to stop the slaughter of these toddlers, right? There is no difference between a one-year-old and a child in the womb. It's a different location, it's a different size, but the humanity and the dignity is the same. Abortion, we focus so much on legislation. Look, I, I'm, a, I'm a huge proponent of pro-life legislation. I work, I, I, I you know, roam the halls of Congress, I do my lobbying, I, I do my part. But abortions are not happening in the halls of Congress. They are not happening in the White House. They are happening in our communities down the road from where we live. That's where we need to take action, first and foremost. Because our end goal cannot be simply to make abortion illegal. That is a goal. But our end goal must be to make abortion unthinkable. So that it, when a woman experiences an unplanned pregnancy, she never even thinks about darkening the door of a facility that will exploit her, manipulate her, and take the life of her child. Yeah, it's a hard perspective that it needs is. to come from. Especially the church needs to stand up yes. for this moment. You know, it could be even a church community. The church has got to stand together as a mm -hmm. church body on this. So it could be uh, starting an Embrace Grace group mm -hmm. in your church supporting single moms in your church. Your church is full of talent. It is full of people with, with gifts, varying gifts. And so you might have a single mama in your church whose car broke down. And I bet you have a mechanic in your church who could fix that mom's car. And maybe the church could cover the, car, the cost of the parts if the mechanic would do the labor for free. You might have somebody, a single mom, a pregnant mom, in your church who needs help um, her air conditioner went out I bet you have an HVAC guy in your church who could help that mom out we've got to start taking care of each other we're not meant to do this alone we're not meant to live life in isolation Christ wants us to live life in community in fellowship with other believers we've got to do better 
about connecting the parts of the of, of Christ's body together. Absolutely. Amen. We're going to wrap up our conversation here with Abby, but a couple things. So to remind everyone, the March for Life takes place tomorrow. If you're here in the D.C. area, come join us. It's from 1 to 3. We're marching down Constitution all the way to the Supreme Court where we'll end with prayer. Mm -hmm. Abby is the keynote speaker at the rally that takes place right before that at 12 p.m. right across from the Washington Monument. If you're outside of the Washington, D.C. area throughout this country, there's marches taking place all over mm -hmm. the country. Look those up. See if you can join those. The biggest thing you can do is pray as well. Just pray for the culture of life to be advanced in our country. And we have people like Abby who are willing to stand for that. Um, you can also watch the live stream of the march as well and just see the enormous amount of people. They're expecting over 100,000 people to come in. I'm always amazed at how young the crowd is. Yeah. I was here last year and an overwhelming majority is college age or younger and that is fantastic. And then most of all, Abby's movie Unplanned comes out in March. And we have a really exclusive offer for you. So get your phones out or write a piece of, or get a piece of paper. You can write this down. You're going to text the word unplanned to the number 73075. Again, that's the word unplanned to 73075. And we'll give you some exclusive backsta backstage kind of insight before the movie comes out in March, which is super exciting. So let's end on a note where we can just reflect on God's glory. Where have you seen God's hand the most recently? In your life, in the pro-life movement, that has been just something that's given you hope. I see God's hand so much in our brokenness. And I have a ministry that, that reaches abortion clinic workers. And we have just reached um, about 500 workers who have left and to see their vulnerability and their brokenness just reminds me how much God wants to heal all of us and and just to see their lives transform uh, is such a powerful reminder of the hand of God and, and his mercy and so I'm we have we have former workers here at the March um, and some, this is their you know, first time ever going, and, and so it, it feels so good for them to be embraced by a movement that they once saw as their enemy. Um, and so I really praise God for the work that he's done with our ministry, and uh, the, they just keep coming. So. <laughs> awesome, and that ministry is called And Then There Were None, so very yeah. important, and you can go look up Abby's information, but Abby, thank you so much. We'll be praying you. for you. I know this is a spiritual battle that's going on, and you are in the midst of it, so we're praying for you as well. Thank, you. That. But thank you. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for joining us, and join us tomorrow. We'll be doing Facebook Live from the March as well. God bless.